Hey everybody, Kyle Holleran here. I am the general manager of the KW Alliance Group and I am joined today by the one and only Victoria Piano, the Piano Home Group. How you doing, Victoria? I'm great, how are you? I am doing awesome. So, I've had the privilege, I've known you for a few years now. I yes. think I've gotten to know you better over the past year or so. Yes. Working a little bit closer. I think yes. you have an amazing story. Yes. I think your business has taken off like through the roof, right? Compared yes. to, uh, I feel like a lot of agents. And so I'm really looking forward to like learning more about you today. Yeah. Hearing about your experiences in real estate so far. You know, yeah. we have a lot of people that are gonna watch this video that are getting into the real estate business and they're gonna learn a lot from you today. And I know that I will do the same as well. Right? Yes, so, yeah. we learn from each other for sure. Yeah. That's it, that yeah. is awesome. So tell me about yourself. Let's just maybe start there. Like, like give, me the, give me the rundown of Victoria Piano. Uh, rundown of Victoria Piano. Um, Victoria Viana has a very busy schedule. <laughs> uh, my family, number one, and uh, it's something I hold on to dearly. Um, my two kids, my six-year-old son and my daughter, mm -hmm. she's in college, and my husband. So uh, we are relatively newlyweds. So Congratulations. Uh, thank you so much. And um, I kind of live and breathe our community, which is Willisford and Loudoun County in general. Mm -hmm. Yes. Awesome. Uh, and I'd say my most passionate thing to do is really spending time with family and traveling the world with my family. Yes. So that's what I live for, actually. You have some amazing photos. I know I've been able to watch some of those travels. Right? Yeah. And, and you, I think you run a really efficient business, right? So that you can go do those things. Yeah. And, you know, you just learn that, you know, escaping several days here and there where your business is not going to be affected, but also making the time. You have to make time for your family. Right. You know, business this is always going to be here mm -hmm. and when you build the brand so strong people will respect your family time right. yep. and to me that is not for negotiation yeah it's a little bit of a struggle sometimes right like that's something I struggle with yeah. every once in a while of can I have the big business life and all the big things that I want and at the same time really be present with my family yes. as well yeah. I've got some good coaches that have been in my ear these past few weeks saying like, yes, both are 100% possible yes. by doing the right thing. I think you hit a uh, nail in the head when you said coaches. Mm -hmm. um, when I first started this business now about seven years ago, um, you know, you think you can reinvent the wheel. You think you can do everything on your own, but you can't. Right. It, there's no shortcuts. There's no simple formula. Right. The best thing to do is simply surround yourself with the most amazing people in the industry, which I've done here in KW office rest. And from my day one, I was really, really uh, lucky to meet such an amazing supportive team. And I haven't moved since then. Right. And if you're going to judge the business by me and my success, I think this is the best place in the world. And <laughs> I, I, I mean it. I really mean it. Um, yeah. Having a coach and... Um, mentor in your business is, I would say, number one um, factor that propelled me to be this successful in my career. Right. And, you know, coach that will understand you, understand your personality, teach you how to set goals and how to stick to your goals right. and teach you how what commitment really means. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, so. it's the dedication, right? It's the focus. It um, is a dedication. It is the focus. And uh, to, to to earlier subject, you said, how do you how do you, you know, commit to family and have a successful business? I don't think you can have successful business if you don't have successful family. Mm -hmm. And this is one thing that I've learned in our office here at KW Reston with our coaches, with K KW coaches, is that family number one, right? Business number two, right? I think a lot of people have those backwards too, right? I mean, and we it's can all, easy. And we it's all easy in, to, yes. I think we all get in seasons of life sometimes yes. where it does, right? We're, we're working more than maybe we are present with our family. Yes, yes. But I, I, we were talking before we started the podcast today. Like yes. One of my coaches that I recently w uh, hired and got with is challenging me to do my 411, right? Like a basic principle of Keller Williams business planning. But he really stressed, like, I want this to be a personal 401 before it becomes business, right? Because if That's you don't, right. if you're not clear on your personal goals and your family, yes then how are you setting up your business in order for that to actually happen? I am also a big believer, how are you, if you can't be good to you and your family, how can you be good to your clients? Right. Yep. How can you be good to your to your business? I mean, this is those are your children too. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And if you treat it that way, then um, it's important to to have clarity on that and, and to kind of 
you know, get back to basis and understand why am I here today? Yeah, I mean, actions speak louder than words, right? This is something that's I'm right. going, you, you said you have a six-year-old, right? And then yes. a, another child that's in college. That's right. I have a three-year-old. And I think someone challenged me and they just said, hey, listen, yeah. like you can tell your kids you're present, but if you're on your phone, like that's they can right. feel your energy. Yes. So that's been something I've been focusing on here the last few yes. weeks of making mm -hmm. sure I'm present, right? Yes. Phone goes in the drawer during the couple hours that my kids are on before dinner time. That's right. Sounds like you have a very good mindset and balance around those two things as well. You know, it wasn't always like that. Right. It's it's you know you learn you grow through point. your you yeah. grow through your failures you yeah. grow through your, um you know, your what do they say your business growth uh, to the extent that you extent do extent to your personal growth right, right? Yep. Uh, and this is why I think coaching is so important. Um, you know, at some point you just realize that uh, your family does not deserve you taking calls at 10 p.m. Right. or 8 p.m. when it's time for kids to go to bed right. or, you know, there's a dinner time for family. What are you telling your family if you're putting everything else in front of them? Right. So it's just- if and, you, and treat people how to treat you. That's right. And, and teach people how to treat you too. And I will always, this is important to understand, it took me a minute to learn this, that you know, once you build your brand, and your brand is also setting some expectations with your clients in your business, um, once you set your brand and re create these trustworthy relationships, your clients will respect you. Right. They will actually respect you more because you respect your family. Right. They understand, they have family too. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's an honorable thing. It is an honorable thing. Right. If text comes at 11 p.m., maybe that somebody texted because they don't want to forget it. That doesn't mean you need to jump to, not because they want to disrespect your time. It's you're the factor who decides, hey, when do I address this? Right. And again, I'm not 100% perfect. This is something I think anybody in business yeah, will continue to work at, sure. right? But I think about other professions, doctors, attorneys, right? Like we don't just call our doctor at 11 o'clock at night. And so we, I think sometimes in our don't. industry with realtors, we yeah. allow our clients to do that. Yes. We need to set boundaries, right? Yeah. So that we can make sure we're protecting the time that we have yeah. with the people that are ultimately the reason we do all of the work we do every single exactly. day. And you know, here's the thing, you know, your clients can read your mind. Right. They can't, and they don't mean to disrespect you. They just don't know. But if you explain to them, just like you explain to them, this is how this listing is going to work. This is how this buying process is going to work. And this is how things will work in our relationship. And does that sound good to you? Is that fair? Do you think that's fair? You know, just setting expectations. So your clients can also understand your values. Right. And you can understand their values. Right, yep. So it's just a meeting of the mind. and making sure you, you just work. At the end, you have to work together. Right. Yeah. Take you back for a second. Yes. Tell me about how you got started in real estate. Like why real estate? What? How did you get into this industry? Was there a person? Was there a moment? Yes. What so, was it for you? You know, I think uh, there is always a groundbreaking moment in your life that pushes you to make some of the most courageous, you know, moments or steps in life. And um, to me, I was in, I've been in sales since I was 18. I've sell, sold tangible, non -tangible. It's just a thing I've done all life, just negotiated and negotiated, right? <laughs> um, and it was by default. It wasn't by, you know, a choice or anything. I just did what I had to do, right? Um, at some point, I worked for a, a big developer in the United States, and one year they, uh, you know, when you work for a new developer, you have to sign your contract every year. And... Uh, one year they just came with a contract, never disclosed anything to me and uh, expected me to sign on it. I read my contract as everyone should read their contract. And I saw that there is a uh, like 20% cut in my commission structure. Right. No one disclosed that and I made it a big deal to the company, but they said, Victoria, you've been doing so great. If we keep you there, you're gonna be making way more than anybody else. So. I didn't understand that. I mean, this is why I chose the sales position. This right. is why I'm in sales sale because, yeah. because sky is the limit. Um, anyway, so because they didn't want to do anything about it, I made a decision to explore other options. Right. And I kept talking to uh, other clients, agents that were coming to my offices. How, how did they do it? It was the scariest thing. Right. Look, how am I gonna do that? And you know, if you guys are watching this, 
this is one thing you need to hear. Fear is the most handicapping, handicapping thing in your life. Fear is the most limiting thing in anyone's life. I was a single mother with a daughter with a huge mortgage of a single family home. I had a car payment. I had to put my daughter to school through her piano lessons and supporting my family back in Europe. I was alone and I do not have family in this country to support me or to say, hey, here's a few, few bucks just to see it through. Right. I had nothing, but I decided I'm gonna try this and I'm gonna try until I'm completely done and dead with all the tries there are. And if I don't succeed, I th my thing was that I would be so disappointed in myself because I did not wanna go back to the life I lived working crazy, crazy right. hours, 15 hour days and right. all that. And I said, I remember it was May 21st, I got paid for the last building with a developer, mm -hmm. and I went and shook a hand to the to the president. They were all in shock. Tried to do everything to 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 keep me. Yep. But in my head, because I did my research, in my mind, in my heart, I was already a millionaire real estate agent. When they called me to get me back, they said, "We're going to give you your bonuses back. You're going to have this and this. Please stay." I didn't want to reject it right away. I said, I'm going to sleep on it. Mm -hmm. I woke up next morning and I had that feeling in my stomach. I just couldn't see myself going back because I already had created this success in my mind, in my heart, that I am that multimillionaire agent and nothing else could compare. Whatever they promised me could not compare with already the vision I had. Right. I called him the next morning. I said, I really appreciate you reaching out with all due respect. I, would, I will decline. And I hung up that phone call. I felt so free. It was the biggest revelation to me. I actually, instead of being terrified, I felt free. I was terrified to make a decision, but once I made that decision, I felt so free. Yep. I felt like all the mountains and burdens that I've carried in my back had just, just gone away. Um, that was May. It took me about six months to start getting my first deals together. I remember December 30th, I, couldn't ha I, I didn't have enough money to pay my mortgage. I had a, actually it was December 28th or something. On December 29th, I had the first closing and by the time office processes the payment and so on, yep. I was able to make that payment on January 15. Right. Yep. And since then it's been a history, you know. Um, fear is something that can really, really um, take away an incredible potential of who you are. Mm -hmm. Fear is something that can, that can really, really rob you from the best life you can live. But also, fear can propel you to make some incredible steps in your life. And for me, that was, I gotta do this, or I'm never gonna respect myself. So I had no other choice. As a single mom. Yeah, you committed no, to it. I, you just commit, and you commit with <laughs> every, sell it in your Well, body. I think that's the difference, right? Some people yeah. say they're committed to it. Yeah. When you're in a moment like that, yeah. right? When you when you have to make it happen, yeah. I feel like it's when that switch happens. Yes. And I think most of, the, most of the successful people that I talk to that aren't just like successful, like massively successful. And I see you as one of those people, right? Yeah. We're gonna talk about it in a minute, some of the accolades I think that you have accomplished in the past couple of years. But yeah. at some point, it is interesting how most of the most successful people have hit that spot in their life, right? And they've made that decision in that moment to say, I'm never gonna get back here again. And yes. this, is the, this is the decision, this is the moment that I'm gonna move forward. That's right. And what scares me a little bit is, you can go your whole lifetime without having that conversation, right? There may not be people around you pushing you to say, I love that. Hey, like you deserve a big life, right? All of us do. I think every single person has a dream. At some point, you've gotta make a decision to say, yeah. I'm gonna go get it. 
I'm gonna have a business plan to do it. It may not be the most fun thing mm -hmm. in the world, but I'm willing to sacrifice mm -hmm. to get to where I wanna go. I think 99% of people in the world, they have no idea how great they can be mm -hmm. because someone else told them they can't because they, have, they don't have a right environment around them. Sure. And because they're simply insecure or afraid. Right. And I think, I hope that people through my success and people that are in this business and real estate and any kind of entrepreneurship out, any, any business, they can see that anyone can be a success story. Right, absolutely. Anyone can be a success story. I think the biggest driver to success is I have no other option. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any other option. Now, if you have options, your motivation just drops down. Right, yep. But if you're gonna do one thing, if you're gonna do real estate in, in this case, uh, it's gotta be the only thing you will do to be widely successful. Right. One, th the only thing. To me, my biggest, I think my, my the moment I realized I am going to be widely successful is when I went to Mega Camp. I have just uh, taken my uh, uh, licensing course. Mm -hmm. I didn't even get my license. Right. Team leader of the KW Reston office came to me. She interviewed me because I interviewed a bunch of offices and I ended up actually uh, committing to, to the team leader here in Reston. And she asked me, what are your goals? I said, um, I want to make a million dollars. And she looked at me. She said, Victoria, would you like to join us at uh, Mega Camp in uh, Austin, Texas right. in, in a few weeks? And I'm like, tell me about it. She's like, well, this is something that everyone goes and sees and they're you know, blown away with inspiration with it's like a jet fuel it's it's you know success stories and i thought like what do i have to lose let's do it mm -hmm. i think that week or so we went to mega camp kw mega camp in austin texas and i was <laughs> blown away with information with amazing stories from just very ordinary people and I'm not talking about little success. I'm talking about multi, Massive. multi, mega, mega, mega million ages. I'm talking about seven level. Right. And I walked away from that, uh, from the camp, from mega camp. We came and I just saw that I could do it. Like you, you saw in your heart, like they did it, I can do it. Sure. They did, I can do it. So mega camp, KW mega camp changed my entire I think trajectory of my life. I think I've told that story actually, like in one of the previous episodes was I went to Fan Marina for the very first time. And that was yeah. when, love my market center, right? Love local. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the lid was so big with the company that when I walked into that room, I just realized. The energy of 20,000 agents. And there's in that moment, you know, I think KW now has 190,000 agents, but like in yeah. that moment, there was 15 or 18,000 people in one room together committed to massive success for each other. And I yes. felt like this is my tribe, right? This is where I want to be. This is who I want to learn from. The strength of the culture and the strength of giving back community is something I've never seen. Right. I see agents going all over trying to figure out where they belong and so on. Um, I have not seen a culture so strong. Uh, just the support system so strong because here's the thing if that team leader of the kws and office here didn't tell me victoria come to mega camp you missed it you know what not only that i i would miss my life now right what i would, wouldn't what be it on, look like yeah. what would my life look like if i didn't go to that mm -hmm. because it took one mentor to tell me what i needed to hear and give me just you know, point me to the right direction. It's been a little bit of a theme this year, right? It's interesting that you say that. Like this yeah. idea of like, one more. One more. Right, one Love more it. phone call, one more email. Uh, like, and, and what difference can that make in your life by- I have a just, great story about one more. Just taking an extra half step. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, yeah. Um, when everybody else is doing 10, you do 11. Mm -hmm. When everybody else is doing 100, you do 101. When everybody else is, you know, working, 
I don't know, until, you know, 10 hours. You do 10 hour in one minute. Because that one extra thing can change everything. So I'm gonna share a little story with you. I share this story uh, with Ryan and Isaiah, I believe. Uh, actually, you were not there. Uh, about one more. Mm -hmm. So back in Europe, I was looking for a job. I was, you know, in my 20s. And that was right after war, and I was trying so hard to find a job as an interpreter for international companies because they paid. Like, we would work for 200, 300 euros a month, right? right? Yeah. And they were paying like a thousand. I'm like, that was fortunate. Like, oh, you imagine if I could make thousand you know, euros a month, that would change my life. I think I've applied to so many jobs, hundreds hundreds and you know when you go through so many rejections you have to understand um environment after war no jobs uh economy is terrible uh, the only opportunity is international companies and ngos are trying to build a country after the war and i was working as a young girl at a italian duty-free shop it was fun it was nice but that's not what i wanted and one person came to me knowing, and I was very vocal about what I want. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, here's a little lesson. You want something? Tell the world. What is that you want? What do you need? Tell the world. Tell someone. There was a book written by Mo Anderson. My ch and this, it says that, um, you know, my life changed when I started asking for things I needed, right. I wanted. Yeah, sure. And that's, that's one. So I was very vocal about what do I want, what do I need? I'm looking for a job. This one person came into duty free and said, hey, call this person. Great guy. Give him a shot. And I took the card. Understand, 100 times I've applied for interpreter position. 100 times, 100 times I've heard no hundred times and I put a card in my back pocket I said sure I'll call one day went by second day went by third day went by and one time I'm sitting at, the, at home and I remember I, I just pulled it out of my pocket I put it there and I'm looking at the card and I'm like why bother it's gonna be just another rejection why bother and and I kept looking at it and I'm like you know what let me gi let me give him a call let's see what the, you know let's let's see what's gonna happen and I don't know why I decided to call but I did I'm like just, I'll just call I called you know number and somebody picks up I'm like is this this is and he was like yeah this is what it is I said I'm looking for a job somebody gave me a card I'm looking to be an interpreter he's like great why don't you come in tomorrow uh, for an interview I'm like what He's like, yeah, come for an interview tomorrow. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, you don't even have my resume. It's fine, you can just come. I could never get to the step of interview. As far as you've gotten. This person tells me, come to the interview tomorrow morning. So tomorrow morning, I'm at the interview. <laughs> so, I think the most amazing thing is that, <laughs> um, This man turned to be now father of my 18-year-old daughter. And we moved here in the United States back in 2004. And um, it turned to be a father to my daughter and my husband at the time. And um, I sit back and I think about what would happen if I never made that sure. call, right. you know? Right. Like, and I, you know, the fearful thing is that I almost didn't make that call. Mm -hmm. I almost didn't make that call. <laughs> and I shared this story with, with my daughter just about two weeks ago when we were at, uh, in California. And I asked her, I said, do you know who that man is? She's like, no. I said, that is your dad, honey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, anyways, I think you should never stop trying. That there is nothing in this world that will that should discourage you from trying again. So you just keep pushing forward. I mean, everyone's in a different spot. 
And it's, it's uh, you think about that. Would you yeah. even be in the United States? No, right? I wouldn't. My right. life, who knows where my life would take me. Right. It is because, you know, we got married back in Croatia, Dubrovnik. We came to this country because his headquarters were here. Our daughter was born here. Right. Um, it is completely different life that I could ever imagine, right. ever, right. coming from former Yugoslavia, sure. the war, war-torn war country. Right. right, right. So that was a data point in your life, changed a lot. Now you have gone to a spot where, you know, some of you know this who follow Victoria on social media or see all the amazing stuff you've done, but in, in a very short time, you have now gone to one of the top agents, not only in Keller Williams in the region, but like one of the top agents in Virginia, one of the top agents in all of KW, right? You got an invite to Gary Keller's top 100 this year, which is States, yeah. the cream of the cream, right? Like you talked yeah. about how important Mega Camp was. I mean, now you're yes. even in a smaller room with yeah. some of the most impactful people there, right? Yeah. Tell me about that. Tell me about how you have gotten to a spot where so quickly you're able to focus on your business, get those things done, manage your family. What's the secret sauce? Secret sauce is, gosh, I feel like you have, you know, there's there's one call I had with our team and I said, brave, foolish, and relentless. I think that's secret sauce. I like that. You know, you got to be brave to do things that no one else is willing to, to do. Even when people say to you, oh why you should do that such a waste of time oh that's too much or that's too little everybody in the world has an opinion how you should run your business and how you should live your life i think number one is cut all the noise out listen to your heart and it's a very and that voice inside it tells you this sounds great mm -hmm. hey why why don't i try that I have this conversation with my, with my assistant all the time. She's my right hand, and I was like, "Hey, how about this?" And I was like, "Hey, why don't we do this? Why don't we do this?" You know, uh, and and the key is that when you come up with that idea, make sure you implement it. Implement it right away. Don't wait. Don't forget. Don't put it on a you know on the side. Just do it right away. Right. Um, I had many people in the beginning tell me, "Oh, what is she doing? Why? That's too much." Guess what? Who's laughing now? Sure, you're right. The, you're the one sitting here. So, so, so I think, and so when I say brave, you know, you gotta like, you gotta do something. I mean, everyone's gonna have fear, right? Yes. Having absolutely. limiting beliefs is a real thing. Everyone has it. I have them. You have them. The difference is, yeah. How do you handle them, right? How do you react to them? You know, the difference is also have a fear. Understand your life is challenging you to see and test what are you made of. Right. So when you, so, so everyone that is watching, when you have discomfort and a fear of anything that's coming your way, when you have the doubts, this is life testing you to see what are you really made of? And it is your chance to fight back and prove to yourself and everyone else what are you really made of? It's a challenge. It's a challenge. I mean, it's some, a fight. Some, some, I mean, I have this conversation often, right? Like mm -hmm. some of the people that are still standing and standing and, and yeah. have the most success is because they're relentless. They won't that's give right. up, right? Yeah. They will continue to take the, they will fail forward. I mean, yeah. that's obviously something we talk about all the time, but yeah. I know you have failed more than most people. I have failed more than a lot of people, but it, it encourages us to then keep moving in the right direction and continue it's to build. It's almost in despite of the failure, you wanna like do it. Like, no, I'm, you know what? My failure does not define me right. because I know it's only one step towards me, better me. Right. My failure, you know, our failure teaches sure. lessons. Are, okay, what have I done wrong? Okay, you know, maybe I just didn't try enough or maybe it was just wrong, wrong time. That doesn't mean you should give up, sure. right? Yep. Just keep at it. Keep at it. That's you, it. You and I were in um, California together a couple weeks ago and we sat next to each other doing one of the speeches and Molly Fletcher was there talking about how she works with the, all these athletes. Yeah. And I thought something was really intriguing to me was she said the difference between the people who make the cut in the PGA, who win the World Series in, in uh, you know, MLB, et cetera. She just said they simply can recover faster. Yes. Right? Everyone else lingers on their mental mistakes. Everyone lingers on their failures. They just mm -hmm. say, part of the process, let's keep moving on. And to your point, mm -hmm. they see adversity as a challenge and they're, they're willing to just 
face it head on and go right into it and find solutions right. as quickly as possible. Yeah, that's right. right. I think that, uh, but again, it comes down to programming yourself to be successful. It comes down to surrounding yourself with the right people. Right. You know, uh, we talk about social media today. We, you know, I had a class, branding class that I, uh, I was, uh, uh, a panel speaker in one of our offices, and we talked about branding. You know, you don't have a brand if no one knows about it. You're not a brand if I don't know about you. Right. How are we communicating with our audience, who we are, what do we stand for, what is our business through social media? Right. We have podcast office mm -hmm. that's given to us. Like, this is a huge tool that any agent in our KW Reston office can use. Every day, this office should be booked and packed from 9 a.m. until 9 p.m. I agree with you. Is it booked and packed? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Why? Because here's the thing, guys. If you didn't know, attention brings money. Attention brings clients. If you don't have attention, there's no money. You have to create attention. Why the biggest companies hire, you know, uh, famous models or famous actors because they have attention. How are you creating attention? Right. If you're not creating attention by your business, you know, there's no money. Sure. Marketing works. Marketing, social media is oxygen to our business. Mm -hmm. So we have this amazing podcast studio again. You should be here every day <laughs> shooting a video. And if you're not there, take your phone and say something. I don't care what it is. Check my Instagram, check my stories. How many stories do we have a day? Like 10, 12, 15 sometimes, mm -hmm. you know. My think is that attention equals business. So create attention. Well, and, and you said 10 or 12, and that's consistent. consistent. That's part of it, right? Uh, we can yeah. get creative, we can have this entrepreneurial spirit, we might wanna try something different next week, but mm -hmm. we hear yeah. this over and over again, right? Don't hide in complexity. Yeah. Do the simple things, right? And Do, be consistent. Like yeah. and the consistency factor will win every single time over talent. And you have amazing coaches. I have to say, like, in our office, we have amazing coaches that will talk to you about social media. They will talk to you about getting over the fears of, you know, someone who's going to invest time in you, discovering you, you, mm -hmm. is a God's gift to me. Sure. Because we don't, I didn't know who I am maybe until I went to Mega Camp, until my mentor here in this office told me, Victoria, let's do this. Right. I didn't know I was capable of this. I mean, I knew I was driven. I knew I'm, I knew I, I have, you know, work ethic. I didn't have a choice with my mom and my dad, sure. trust me. <laughs> no, but what I you're saying is like, I didn't know what was possible. Go find your tribe, right? Yeah. Go find the people that want to be around you, that want to help you build this thing. Yeah. And, and I know that at the Alliance Group, that's what we do right here at KW Rest. I know that's what we do. And I don't know where and where, what other place does offer what we, we offer here. Like I take time out of my crazy schedule and coach our agents here. Mm -hmm. And we can coach them on anything, on listings, buying, sure. understanding the real estate, you know, not just doing the real estate transaction, but understanding that the business, improving their life too. Right. Yep. Improving their life, yeah. Tell me about how did you get into luxury real estate? By default, by default. So it's, you know, it's always been, in, in general, real estate just has been a default. It was not something as, oh, when I grow up, I'm gonna do this. Yeah. No, well, I'll tell you what I di did know when I grew up. I knew I'm going to be widely successful. You can ask my mom, she used to laugh at me. I was like five, six years, mom, you don't know. When I grow up, I'm gonna have this big house. I'm gonna take care of you, mom. You're gonna have a you're gonna have a helper at home to help you. We're gonna have whatever you need. Right. She used to laugh at me, mm -hmm. and we laugh at that now. now because you made it happen. Mom and I sit and talk. We laugh at it, and she's like, you know, she's proud, right? And that makes me happy, you know. Um, but it's it's just one of these things that you know, um, you just you just need to uh, you need to do what it takes, and you know, it's it's. I don't know, you just stick with the right people. Pick your place and grow your roots. If you start hopping here and there, you will never grow your roots. You are as good as your roots. Mm -hmm. You can grow if you don't have stable, strong roots. Right. So Willisford, 
Yes. That's a community where you've sold a lot of That's houses, right? right? You right. do a lot of the business that happens in that neighborhood. Yeah. Was that because you lived there? How did you how did you end so, up doing yeah. so much business in the neighborhood? I ended up moving there because my daughter once said, hey, mom, why don't we drive there? You know, it'll be easier. You will be closer to dad. And I said, sure, well, let's go for a ride. So I stumbled upon, upon this amazing community. And I'm like, wow, what is this? I walked into a model. I never thought, you know, I never thought I could afford this home. But somehow when you want something so much. You make it happen. You make it happen. And that was just about a time when I started my real estate business. And so I saw other agents doing job and so on and so on. And I'm super competitive. So I, 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 I remember having a conversation with one of my neighbors. I said, you watch me in one year. I will own this community. And she, and she knew I meant it. Sure. We laugh about it today. She knew I meant I saw what agents were doing, and I was like, why wouldn't they clean that room? Right. Why would you take these phone photos? Why there's stuff all over in this house? Like, look at this house. This is a $2 million home, and there's just few photos slab. There's no story behind it. Do people understand the value of this community? Do they know every amenity? Do they know, you know, do they know where we are located? And why are we the best? Right. So I didn't see the stories behind these listings that were coming on the market, and I was bothered by it. So... I decided to do my first video and talk about not just the house, but the lifestyle. Right. And why everyone in the world should live in Willisford. If you ask me, everybody should live in Willisford, but we can only take so many. So <laughs> get in line. <laughs> Those videos, right? I yes. mean, that's what I see. I mean, the, the way you present the listings, yes. the way you talk about the lifestyle of the neighborhood. Yes. Right? That's what you're selling. You're selling luxury. When people are spending money, I don't care if it's 300000 or $3 million. Think about this. The person spending that 300000 it's probably they probably think this is the biggest next step they're going to do in their life, right? right? Or when you're selling a $3 million, you know, these people clearly know what they want, clearly have high expectations. You better button up, mm -hmm. right? Sure. So you have to understand who is your buyer. You need to know and understand the bride's profile, their culture, their needs, their passion. You, ha you, you have to understand why they're coming to you. And if you do understand, then you will be able to communicate better on the other end. Right. And how do we communicate? Through high luxury videos. We want to give them dream. We want to give them lifestyle. We want to give them uh, the promised life because they deserve it. Right. So and it's my job to tell them why this is the best place for them. From the perfectly folded toilet paper to the beautiful whitey scent that we put in our listings, right. to every pillow to be perfect, mm -hmm. through music they're listening, every sense should be on. So just you have said my target client has a certain value proposition they're looking for. Yes. And you've done a really good job of filling that value proposition, selling that dream, and not only selling it, but following through on it too. Well, you have to follow through. Yeah. You have to follow through. Right. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. What is um what's a big goal of yours this year for your team? What is something that you guys in 2023 are looking to accomplish? 2023 is going to be a huge year for our team. We're looking to and I have not shared this with anybody, but it's a big real relation, right? It's a big uh, uh sort of news. We are expanding into uh uh multifamily units, commercial business. Mm -hmm. And our goals are massive. Our goals are $20 million uh, this year. Mm -hmm. And we're excited. We're excited. So we're, I think if you, don't st if you don't grow, you're going to die off. So we have to keep growing. You, you are a person that is not afraid to get outside of your comfort zone? I am not. I used to be. Yep. Sometimes, you know, I'll be like, wait a second. But then, you know, you got to stop negotiating with your brain. <laughs> just do it. Don't listen to anybody. Just follow your gut. You know, your gut will tell you. Your gut will tell you, you should do it. just listen to it. So I, what I'm taking away from this is you follow your instincts a lot. Mm -hmm. You're, you're, you're going to go right into fear, right? Get to the other side of it. Mm -hmm. I, I know you're an extremely talented person. 
and you're just making decisions on a daily basis to get your life to where you want it to be, right? That's right. You're not hiding behind complexity. You're not making it a bigger story than it needs to be. Yeah. You show up for your people. You show up for your clients every show day. Show up. You got to show up. That's and it's, right. And it's, and it's founded in yeah. your family. And be relentless. You know, just, just stay at it. Be relentless. And don't let anybody define you where your success should be or where you should stay at. Right. You know, just yep. keep going. I think moving, just being active and keep moving, just moving ahead, just one step in front of the other. That's it. Just keep going one step at a time. That's right. I know I love following you on social media, right? If some of the people watching here want to learn more about you, follow you on social, yes. where, can they, where can they find you? It's simple, Victoria Piano. Uh, Victoria is spelled with a V-I-K-T-O-R-I-J-A, piano like instrument. So definitely follow me on Instagram, you know, for you new entrepreneurs, if you need help to uh, become what you feel you should become, to grow in your business. I don't think there's any other place, but this office, I'm, I'm being very, um, uh, biased about it because my success came with this office. Um, a single mom from out of this country, you know, with no help at all. If I did it, anyone can do it with the right people around you. You're on the right path. All right. So if you have a dream, this is living proof that you can make it happen yes. by making the right decisions, right? That's so right. welcome yeah. here at KW Alliance Group. Victoria, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Thank you. Hope you have a wildly successful week. Thank you. Talk you to too. You soon. Bye. Talk to you soon. <laughs>